And also, the fact that we use a verb here now, we say, Iyaka na'budu, we worship. Subhanallah, we don't say a'bud. When we say, Iyaka na'budu, you alone we worship. What this does is that this actually gives us the element of congregation, the element of jama'ah. And this is the reason why, uh, why when anyone prays uh, the jama'ah in salah, the, the salah in jama'ah, then what happens is that this person gets 27 times more reward. Seven times, seven, 27 times more reward or 25 more times reward simply because he's praying in jama'ah. So here, it's, almost, it's actually almost implying the fact that they say, Iyaka na'budu, is that we should be praying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only in jama'ah. This is the first thing. A second thing is that not only does it highlight, uh, the, indic- uh, highlight the importance of praying in jama'ah, but also it's telling us that verily the believers are brothers. That we are all together in this. We are all worshipping you together, O oh Allah. And also what it does is that it takes, it brings about humility. And it takes, a while, takes any type of uh, greatness for the individual. Because when someone is worshipping, perhaps he's worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, he said, and he's thinking to himself, I've done all this worship for you. So this person may be thinking that I'm so great because I have done this much. But rather, what this does is that this humbles the person. It gives humility to the person to remember, to remind him that he is not the only one worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is ibadah mentioned before isti'ana? Why is ibadah or worship mentioned before seeking aid? There are a number of reasons for this. A number of reasons. The first reason is we were created for what? For ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ we, were, we did not create the mankind, uh, the jinn and the mankind except to what? To worship me alone. Okay, so this is the first thing. The first thing is that we are worshipping or we are uh, mentioning ibadah because this is our main purpose. Another reason why the word ibadah is mentioned before, before the word isti'ana is because seeking aid is mentioned second because it helps uh, to establish the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? It helps to establish the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are mentioning the aim before the means. The means is isti'ana, but the aim is what? Is ibadah. So this is another meaning. Another uh, Reason why the word ibadah is mentioned first is because it is more fitting for it to be used here. Okay, because the word uh, yes, because if we look at the beginning of the surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And so if we look at the names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, he mentions the word two, word, two names in the, first, in the first ayah. The first ayah, the first name that he mentions is uh, Allah, and the second uh, that he mentions is Rabb. The word Allah is, gives that understanding of ubudiyah or servitude. And this goes in line with the what? Ibadah. And isti'ana, when we, whenever, or the most common word, or well, the most common uh, uh, name that we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we, are, when we uh, make dua to him is what? Is Rabb. Because we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to nurture us, to shower his uh, mercy over us by using the word Rabb. So this is the why you get the word isti'ana. Because when you're seeking isti'ana, you're seeking help and aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, this is actually very similar in the terms of its implication that you are turning to uh, Rabb. Also, if we look at the word uh, There is a demarcation between, within this, this, uh, this ayah So everything that comes, between, everything, everything that comes before Is what? Is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Rahman rahim maliki yawmidin This is all about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And if we look at the second part of the surah Iyaka nasta'een all of that is about who? About the creation. It's about the slaves. 
So this is another reason why the word ibadah is mentioned before, before the word isti'ana. We notice also that there's been a change, or there's been something in the Arabic, or uh, in tafsir they call it iltifat. Iltifat means that there's been a change in person. What this means is, example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, uh, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, all praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, uh, the, the Rabb of the Alameen, uh, uh, he, uh, he is the most merciful, the bestower of mercy, and he is the owner of the, the day of judgment, so on and so forth. All of that is what? In the third person. Okay, it's in the ghaib. Okay, these are, this is all in the, uh, the third person, meaning he or she or they. Okay, but now there's been an iltifat. Iyaka na'budu, you alone we worship. This is the second person. We're addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Meaning that we are addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone for what? We are addressing him directly. That meaning that we should only be addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. We do not need to go through anyone else. But also... That once we understand uh, that, that, uh, that when we are seeking uh, something from someone, it is stronger for us to be seeking something from someone who is present, not someone who is not present. Okay? This is why uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam said, فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلِ رَأَ الْكَوْكَبَ قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي فَلَمَّا أَفَلَا قَالَ لَا أُحِبُّ الْآفِلِينَ When the night grew dark upon him, he beheld a star. He said, this is my Lord. But when it set, he said, I do not love those things which are not present or those things which set. So it's from the nature of humankind that when we call upon someone, when we need help, we call upon that person directly. So this brings more strength or this will bring more sincerity to that individual in that we are calling upon someone who is hearing our prayers. And this is the reason why I say, Iyaka na'budu, you alone you alone we worship, Ya Allah. So now that we have learnt, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us how to praise Him, how to love Him, how to have hope in Him, how to, uh, uh, how to uh, have fear of Him, and now we have told Him that, Ya Allah, we are worshipping You alone. We are not asking from anyone else. We are worshipping You alone, and we are only seeking aid and guidance from You alone. Now we have done all of that. Just like you, someone was to go to a king. If someone goes to a king or they go to someone that they know can, uh, ha they can actually answer uh, their request, instead of going to that request straight away, what do they do? They start, say, start praising that king and start saying, Oh king, you have done, you know, you are this and you are that and this and, and so on and so forth. I have been a very loyal subject to you. I do this and I do that. And then they ask for their request. This is what we are doing in this Surah Al-Fatiha. Because after we have done all of this, this is where we make the du'a. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeen. Ihdina sirat al-mustaqeen. Guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. Now the word hidayah or the word uh, ihdina, the word hidayah it has a number of meanings. It can mean irshad, dalala, tabyin, ilham. But basically it has three main meanings. Or the implications of it has three main meanings. This is example because this is very strange. We are praising, we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not in a nightclub, we're not in a pub, we're not in a pub, we're not drinking alcohol. We are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yet we're asking for guidance. This is something which is ajib, something people may find very strange. Hang on, we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yet we are asking for guidance? This sounds like a ta'arud, this sounds like a, a, a contradiction. No, it's not a contradiction. Because this word, uh, hidayah, it has three main meanings. 